welcome to the truce. Of course, trues, in a way, is a bit of a Scottish word, isn't it? I think it means trousers to Scottish people, doesn't it? The truce is the news. If the news were true, subscribe here to get the truce every day beam directly into the middle of your consciousness where it will sprout like a glorious flower of Scotland. Today we're talking about Scottish independence, power and democracy. Let's have a look though before I start piping up at what David Cameron's got to say, a man whose face immediately inspires love deep within me. Independence would not be a trial separation, it would be a painful divorce. <laughs> what a motive piece of language there to use. What I don't like when politicians are doing emotive rhetoric is how they try and do some acting. Like he's now trying to do the face of a person. I better do a face that I'd do if I was going for a painful divorce. <laughs> and as Prime Minister, I have to tell you what that would mean. It would mean we no longer share the same currency. It would mean the armed forces we've built up together over centuries being split up forever. Money, violence. That's his first things he's got in with. Right, well, you can't have the Queen on your money. We won't let you back us up in our needless conflicts when we're fellating the Americans and the corporations within them. Oh, good. It would mean the automatic support that you currently get from British embassies when you're travelling around the world that would come to an end. Oh no, I love it when I go down the embassy when you've lost your passport or something like that. That terrible quagmire, that's all we're offering up. Right, military, money, embassies. They got to embassies a bit too quick. If you think that I'm gonna let you borrow my lawnmower, you can forget it. Swing ball, fuck off. That's my swing ball now. It would mean over half of Scottish mortgages suddenly, from one day to the next, being provided by banks in a foreign country. Can you imagine that? A foreigner? It could be a black person. We don't know what colour this person is or what their accent is. They've got their hands in your mortgage. Not like those trustworthy City of London plutocrat snides that we have to bail out to the tune of billions every time they mug us off. This is what would happen. An end to the things that we share together. And the people of Scotland must know these facts before they make this once and for all decision. Now to warn of the consequences is not to scaremonger. When someone says this isn't the scaremonger, after they've said things like, you won't have any money, your mortgage is going to be controlled by a man called Abdul. That is scaremongering, that's why he's had to say this isn't scaremongering. I say all this because I don't want the people of Scotland to be sold a dream that disappears. If I was Scottish, I'd think, where have you been, you cunt? <laughs> it's like, he's just suddenly shown up, going on about how much he's into everything in Scotland. Your mortgage, your mortgage is going to turn into seaweed, there are going to be pigs loose in your garden. Like, where have you been? Where have you been? We've been here, always. Because I would be heartbroken if this family of nations that we've put together and that we've done such amazing things together, if this family of nations was torn apart. Now he's using emotional language. It's interesting, isn't it? Heartbreak and family and divorce. Because what they know is that the Yes campaign galvanises people on a nationalistic tribal level. Scottish people have got their culture and their folk heroes and their myths and their identities. How can we get past that? Fear, a very base promising, you're going to lose your money, your children, your children, they'll all fall over. There's broken glass on the pavement. Right. And then, like, uh, ideas that are deep in our psyche about family, by evoking them and heartbreak, love and emotion. But these people, like David Cameron, like George Osborne, they don't understand emotion in the way we do because they are institutionalised deeply in privilege for their entire lives. They're not people such as we understand them. These are tools of corporate apparatus, tools of state apparatus. The reason Scottish people are so galvanised and excited by this election is because, as I've long said, democracy is typically meaningless. Here, for once, is a referendum where the outcome will affect people's lives, and people are interested. They're not apathetic. That lie ends with the excitement around this referendum. Sometimes, because it's an election, because it's a ballot, I think people can feel it's a bit like a general election, that you make a decision and five years later you can make another decision. If you're fed up with the effing Tories, give them a kick and then maybe we'll think again. You know. Don't try and be normal, mate. Don't try and be fed up with the effing Tories and that pie-faced, moon-faced 
toffee nosed privileged tool of the cruel and corporate David Cameron. Hold on a minute, I am David Cameron! If Scotland voted no to separation, the rest of the United Kingdom would say yes to further devolution. It's been good in the campaign that we've been able to say more about that, uh, and I think that's a positive. No doesn't mean no change. But it all looks terribly last minute in terms of the timetable and the detail. You were the Prime Minister who agreed the referendum, but also kept Devo Max off the ballot paper. I'm glad they kept Devo Max off the ballot paper. Sounds like a drink full of aspartame. Devo Max, why not try Devo Max? It's a meaningless compromise. They try to pull you into the bureaucracy all the time. Can Scotland be independent and keep sterling? How's Scotland going to defend itself? How much North Sea oil revenue can independent Scotland extract? Devolution of the NHS? Currency union? Like, EU? Really though, this is about, you know what this is about, this is about people's emotions and people's sense of connection to land and their sense of having some authority and ownership of their lives. Feelings that we don't get anymore because we know that politics is abstracted from us and interacts in some aloof, ethereal world of high finance. With us, they're just like, oh yeah, no, oh, a billion is going to cost a billion to save the NHS. We ain't got it, I'm afraid. There's been a financial collapse. We need 700 billion to save the sea. Here you go. <laughs> oh, what? So like now, when people get an opportunity to interact and engage with something they feel affects them, they're interested and they're impassioned. And I would say that we don't only want devolution for Scotland, we want further devolution. Devolution right down to the city level, an independent Manchester, an independent Newcastle, an independent London, independence everywhere. So we're all engaged. We're all controlling our own authorities, our municipal authorities, our own utilities and facilities, because what they got when they're talking about power we're more powerful together we're whose power who gets to use that power does the nhs get to use that power do unemployed people get to use that power do homeless people get to use that power whose power is it people like david cameron's rich people's power i feel passionately about our united kingdom i desperately want our country to stay together i very much hope that scotland will vote no and that will trigger further devolution but i'm a democrat i'm a democrat i like democracy where rich people vote about rich people stuff and then we do rich people things. This kind of democracy where ordinary people vote, I don't like this very much. Democracy, in a democracy you wouldn't have the leaders of all three parties all going up there and even Farage, all four of them going up there together to say exactly the same thing. There's your democracy, there's your choice. They all believe the same thing. They all work for the same people. For Scotland, I hope it's better. I hope Alex Salmond and the government that you get in an independent Scotland is better and that the power goes to the people, not to the corporations that the politicians work for. I want our United Kingdom to stay together. I believe we're stronger, safer, better off. I think you're stronger, safer, better off. In this dangerous world of instability and problems and threats, the most recent of which we can see uh, from Syria and Iraq. What? Well, ISIS, like, like, we've spoke to ISIS, they said if Scotland go independent, they're going to go over there and lop heads off left and bloody right. Do you wish that you personally, perhaps, and the union campaign had made more effort earlier on? Well, I believe I fought this campaign very hard. I mean, this is something like my 11th major intervention into this campaign. campaign I'm intervening in the campaign. This is the campaign. It's going quite badly. What, what this is, is people sense a little bit of autonomy. People sense a little bit of democracy. And people are impassioned and people are interested. I think give people more democracy, give people something worth voting for, and everyone will vote for it, including me. It is a campaign of all of those parties and people and trade unions and voluntary bodies and charities and people who have nothing to do with politics who want Scotland to stay part of our family of nations and those who want us to leave. Well, just decide for yourselves, eh? If I had any opportunity to vote and fuck them lot off, I'd vote for it. I hope one day all of us get an opportunity to vote for a new kind of politics. I'm not saying that's what Scotland are getting, but I'm saying that the feeling, the euphoria, the excitement, the unity among Scottish people is precisely because it does feel like there's a point and that exposes the flaw in our democracy, that it is meaningless and they do serve absent corporate bodies, not the population that they're elected to serve. That is some truth. a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Truths is like the news. If the news was true, I want some truths. Let's have some truths.